Acts chapter 5 of I Don't Get the Bible podcast. Welcome. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. We start off with this story that you were um, talking about in the last episode, which is Ananias and, and Sapphira. Sapphira. Uh-huh. Which is so wild. Yeah. Like, where is this happening? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this is what I'm thinking when I read it, but that makes sense. Yeah. Ananias, long story short. Summarize it for us. Ananias uh, and Sapphira are part of this commune and say they sell a piece of property and they s- tell Peter, well, how? what is the order? They basically tell Peter, like, we're giving you all the money from that sale, but they don't. They pocket some. And Peter asks them directly, um, they separately, Ananias comes to Peter, Peter asks him separately, you know, did you give all the money? And he said, you're lying. And Ananias drops dead right there. Gave up the ghost right (laughs) there. Dead. Dead For not giving what he said he would give. Drops dead. So then knowing this, (laughs) Sapphira comes back. And Peter, she's like, where's Ananias? And Peter's like, did you, con- how, what did, Does the same he thing. says, tell me, is the price you and Ananias got for land tests her? She lies. And he's like, how could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? And she drops dead too. Yeah. And then they take him right out and bury him. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, doesn't logic reason tell you that was for a specific time? That it's not happening now. That if you sell your house Mm -hmm. and you tell the pastor, I'm going to give you all the proceeds and you keep some back, that it's your right and you can do it. Not then. Yeah. And I'm glad you're reading it for yourself because anybody with a brain can see we are not in that age. But I can guarantee if I sat here with Matt Slick and, and all these other guys who are all experts, they would all make up some kind of excuse. They don't have the right to make up the excuse they make. What are the excuses? Oh, well, that was because the apostles had special power for them. But, you know, we still have that power by reading of the word. They'll say that maybe if we had more faith, we would be able to condemn people to death for lying to God, which is something we need to talk about, too. And so the, but they or they'll say, you know, it just is it's happening in the world, but it's happening in North Korea in the secret yeah. covens of real worthy people. That's where it's happened. They have every reason under the sun except to say it's fulfilled. How do they not realize that they are the ones that are not this is not happening to them and yeah. they're saying we need more faith and it's like sh- don't you have enough yeah. faith to and they make probably humbly go i don't but the lord expects us to shut up yeah yeah dumb yeah and what does peter say for the reason that they die yeah, that, well, this is my question. Is he's saying he's, you're lying to the Holy Spirit. And, but say God. what he specifically says. Because your version might not have what many, most Christians show as the proof that the Holy Spirit is God. A God in the Trinity. Oh. Um, okay, well, I'll read what he says to Ananias. How is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit? And have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land. Did it belong to you before it was sold? After it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied to human, just to human beings, but to God. So that he says you haven't just lied to humans, but you've lied to God. The fact that he mentions the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit there, that is the premier support that the Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity, a person, oh a gosh. being, and is equal to the Father and the Son. Sorry to yawn right okay. your face. That it, that's one of the only ones. It's it's not the only one, but it is a premier proof text. That is insane. As if the, that the Holy Spirit doesn't represent God, you know. Instead, they make they say that proves He is a God, a person. You know, it's terrible. It's terrible exegesis. Yeah. If anything. The assumption to me would be that the Holy Spirit is and God are synonymous. Yes, synonymous. Because he says, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. And then he says, 
and you've lied to, to God, God. Yeah. as like not separate. Right. You've all not. You've also lied to God. Right. You've lied to the Holy Spirit. You've lied to God. Yeah. No, they say that's proof of him being an individual human, uh, not human spirit. It's not. No, it's not. That's terrible. Yeah. Exegesis. Yeah, it is. Exegesis. Jesus. We do exegesis in the great news. <laughs> It's good exegesis, but yeah, Jeebus. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I was, I was wondering why he says that it's lying to God. Because they promised in the name of God to give the proceeds oh. to everybody it's for appearance. It's mm. for appearance. And they lied because they didn't give. They held some back. It wasn't whether they gave or not, which is another thing that has mm -hmm. to be clear. It was that they lied about it mm -hmm. and they were uh, committing religious hypocrisy. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have, a, do you have another point about that story? Nope. Just those two things. Well, those overall things, mm -hmm. context. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the apostles heal many is the next section. They just continue to perform signs and wonders at the same place. Solomon's colonnade, oh. which must be part of the temple. Okay. Is yeah, probably. Right? Yeah. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by people. Huh. What? Like, I don't really get that phrase. No I one mean, dared join. Okay. Uh, I think it's saying none of the Jews would join them because they were afraid of what afraid, would happen Afraid, even them. though they were highly yeah, regarded. Yeah. Okay. Nevertheless, oh, afraid of what would happen to them. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. That's a consistent thing that continues to be said, added yeah. to the number. As a result, people brought the sick into the streets, laid them on beds and mats so they would just um, fall in Peter's shadow. Yeah. Crowds gathering from the towns, bringing in their sick, tormented by impure spirits. All of them were healed. So I just noted that Peter is this headlining figure so yeah. far. Yeah. Peter's shadow. Yeah. If you could get in his mere shadow, you could be healed. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's beyond the realm of reason. It's purely supernatural. Yeah. And it either was or it wasn't. If uh -huh. it was, where is it now? Uh -huh. Yeah. And also, like, one of the main healings is tormented by impure spirits. Yeah. Which, that isn't much of a thing now. Oh, people around the world believe the spirits, the demons still in, I mean, they're still doing exorcisms. They're still casting demons out. Uh, even of believers, they say demons come into the believers who have God in them, but also demons. And, you know, and then the other side of it is the atheists say when they're describing demonic possession here, they're just describing mental illness. Yeah. That's all it is. Well, perhaps it's both. And they work that way. You know, I don't know. Yeah. But all I know is they were casting them out. I don't think we cast demons out anymore. But I have met dozens of men and women who think you need to specifically get around people and get the demon out of them. Now, you've seen me when I've gone demonic, uh, you know, and this is no, we don't hide anything. I have lost my bricks. Uh, it, it's happened a few times in the presence of my children. And that's not a demon. That, 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 I don't have a demon in me. Wow. I have Christ in me. That is me losing it and letting myself go that way. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's anger. It's anger. It's yeah. passion. It's feeling misunderstood. It's feeling yeah. attacked. And it's just the way we read. Yeah. And everyone can get there. They can. And there are serial killers and people who yeah. very commonly do gnarly things. Yeah. And it's not because they have deep. But there's darkness. You can Definitely see there's dark. darkness in people. Yeah, I'll never I'll never say there isn't darkness. No way. But It's just not demons to you. Well... I mean, we could go down a, a kind of a rabbit hole yeah. here. I wonder about uh, uh, people who die today in the age of fulfillment who love the dark. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they, on the other side, because they love that and God is a good God, lets them 
represent the dark in this world. Mm. But demons of Satan, that whole thing, that's where I'm saying Jesus had the victory because it says, mm -hmm. and the demons were cast in, mm -hmm. okay? But it does the dark inhibit certain post-mortem uh, humans who love the dark and, that, and they don't want anything to do with God? And he says, okay, go ahead and torture, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we out of time? No, no. I'm, it's just kind of, it's a relatively long chapter, so I'm trying yeah. to move. Um, but that, yeah, the, it's wild that they just are in Peter's shadow. Yeah. And, and, and so the, the uh, criminals of religion who are on TV and things, I started to develop an attitude toward them when I was just in my teens. When I went to my grandma's house who lived in an apartment in Whittier, my mom's mom, she was a widower. And she had a square of a piece of uh, like a lace on her refrigerator. And I said, what's that? And she said, oh, this man. And she showed me this card from Ernest Angley. And he's a famous televangelist back in the 60s. He said, if I would do a donation of $50, I would get a healing that he's touched and prayed over. And I'm like, grandma, you've been ripped off. You know, that, 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 that's not happening. And yet, she's needing hope. She's needing something to stand on. Wow. She sends Ernest Ainsley 50 bucks and she gets a two cent piece of cloth. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. And they continue to do it. That's so sad. Angers me. Yeah, that is really terrible. Yeah. Hmm. But I still think that the apostles had that power, and I believe that narrative, and I think that happened. Mm -hmm. And that's where our atheist friends say, that's where you're just crazy. No, they had that power. It's just, I can't, I'm really annoyed with those, like, there are so many people saying things like they're on hallucinogenics, they're on, like, all of this comes from something that we're just learning about now oh, yeah. has informed the bible back then <laughs> or whatever yeah. and it's just yeah that doesn't seem correct it could be that it was mental illness but it was healed right yeah. there so yeah. whether it was a demon or mental illness and it doesn't help though that we have christians saying that we can heal schizophrenics just by praying for them yeah i mean come on well, let's use modern science yeah that's a whole other subject schizophrenics would be healed if we could heal them yeah if we had enough faith yeah yeah and that's the deadly road that people go down when they start buying into taking that narrative and assigning it today yeah and really the worst one of the worst parts is that it's that person doesn't have enough faith but yeah the it's the inverse peter is the one that's healing these people yeah. because of his yeah connection to Jesus. Right. It's not dependent on if they had faith or right. not. Right. He would heal them. Yeah. The guy, the we talked about that, the guy that was lame, the first yeah. healing, he had no idea. He thought he was going to get money. Yeah. It had nothing to do with him them. having enough faith. Yeah. So, it was God blessing them. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you see all that because mm -hmm. it's important. I mean, we have a good friend between us. Mm -hmm. the name starts with J. And he was told if you have enough faith you can heal your grandfather's cancer mm. and and he thought he did and he died and that ruined that friend of ours for quite a while mm. our religion has really hurt people that is so terrible yeah i can't believe someone would say that yeah Okay, so the high priest and his associates, who are members of the party of Sadducees, are filled with jealousy. They again arrest Peter and John. Okay. Um, and in the night, the angel of the Lord came in and breaks them out, and he says, "Go stand in the temple courts and tell people about this new life." <laughs> and new life, what is, is there a meaning? to new life other than just I've never heard new life in scripture so I don't know what version that is NIV that's the nearly inspired version <laughs> <laughs> the 
I can't. I don't have. I was trying to think of another version of NIVs. <laughs> The easier to read version. The Delaney tried other versions and can't. <laughs> okay, version. well, it's fun. I accept whatever version, but I just don't understand that wording. What is it in another version? Uh, the new life that's in you. Let's see. This, this is got to be something like the fresh spirit or something. Um, what's the correct translation that I should be looking at? Well, NIV is uh, good. I mean, the RSV is good. The Young's literal says, go on and, and standing, speak in the temple to the people, all sayings of this, all the sayings of this life. Oh, oh. so teach them all about how to walk this life. Guess. <laughs> I, I love Young's. What does King Jamie say? King says, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. I, I, I like that a little bit better. Tell us all the words of this life. What is this life? It's either Jesus or it's the life that they're living in Jesus. So mm. I like it better than this new life is too obscure to me. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so then at daybreak they go they're teaching and the guards come in to find them not in their cells and they're like what the heck <laughs> uh we found and they t come back before we found the jail securely locked um the the apostles continue to teach um and they're saying Sorry, I'm matching my, well, sorry, no. Guards come, they say, we found it locked, but no one's inside. Um, and someone said, look, the men you put in jail, they're standing in the temple. Sanhedrin confronts them. We give you strict orders not to teach in this name. Um, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. And, and I just that made me realize that they're just really concerned with their reputation. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can read the politic, the politicking right there. Can't you? Yeah. <laughs> so funny. Um, and the apostles again, just say, we're not listening to your authority. We're obeying God's authority. Um, the God of our ancestors raised from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him <laughs> on a cross. Like what, continue to repeat that he doesn't back off no and it's peter why peter still because he didn't... was kind of the chief uh leading apostle remember we talked about him yeah. being the oldest the largest oh yeah and the most uh um what's the word that i am impetuous oh right yeah, he's very impetuous but he was also told to go and open up the doors to the to the gospel so he's leading the way until paul shows up <sighs> Okay, so he'll continue to lead he'll, the way till Paul shows up. He'll continue to lead the way, and then we lose track of what happens with him in Jerusalem because Paul becomes the, the okay, central figure. Okay, okay. All right. Um, yeah, it's always Peter and the apostles. Mm -hmm. Okay, God um, exalted God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior. That just Interesting how he says that, though, huh? God exalted him oh. to his own right hand. It, it, uh, yeah, and yeah. they in Acts, there's never a place where they mess with that. It's always God who does this with this man, huh. constantly. It doesn't mean that God wasn't in Jesus. It just means Jesus had to go through these things as a man to become deified mm. and to fulfill what he was internally through his flesh externally. Mm -hmm. And that's lost mm -hmm. it's through the Trinity because everyone just thinks, no, he's... No, he's God. God exalted him. Yeah. You killed him. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead yeah. and exalted him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's clear. Every the time God of they our do our ancestors it. raised Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, if they take that Holy Spirit verse and read into that, yeah. this is far more clear. Yes. It's <laughs> So I'm so glad to do this with you because... If you just read that, you don't get it. You, yeah. You have to be shown it and then to decide if you see it or not. Yeah. 
Did, okay, yeah, I'm I'm starting to get confused again though because Trinity Trinitarians defend the Trinity as like in the previous verse that we just talked about the Holy Spirit they want to know as a separate entity than God. In that one, I would think they are synonymous, but here there's one that says we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. And Jesus is also separate. Yeah. So just clarify because you want to, it, in the previous verse, the Trinity, the Trinitarians argument was that they're distinct yeah. and we're saying that they're the same, but here you want to say Jesus is distinct from God. He isn't God. Only the flesh of him is distinct mm -hmm. and not God. Okay. The man. And that's what, where we all get lost. Okay. It's just his flesh and the man who was born of a woman in Nazareth. Uh -huh. That is not God. Okay. Yeah. So the argument that this verse is saying Jesus is distinct from God is just, it, it's, I'm just clarifying. That seems like it's the opposite of the argument we made earlier, that the Holy Spirit and God are synonymous. We're trying to say that all three are synonymous. They're all God. Yeah. And do but, you get what I'm trying to say? In one instance, we were saying they're separate. In one, I do. And here come, here's the, why it's difficult. The Spirit, Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. never became incarnate it didn't become something else. Mm -hmm. So the argument of whether it's God or his spirit or they're the same is, isn't hard to make. But when you have a, something oh, become yeah. something else, uh -huh. then you have to decide, well, was that something else God? And the scripture doesn't oh. support that human being God. It supports God becoming a human. And there's a difference between a human being God and God becoming a human. God being in that human. In that human. And that's the, the yeah. difference between what Trinitarians think. They think that they are all three separate, co-equal, co-eternal, co-existing gods. gods. Well, okay. that, but they, that make up the one God. Okay. Yeah, but they are separate. Okay. And it, when you'll, it gets so complex that it's hard, yeah. but you're asking the right questions because that's how you kind of figure it out. Yeah. So, so Jesus, is it correct to say Jesus, God was in Jesus, not God became Jesus. I know you're saying God also became Jesus, but could you say God was in Jesus? Absolutely. In fact, you can be even more emphatic about it and you can say the logos word of God was in Jesus because the scripture says that the word of it was God his was very in. word that was in Jesus. Mm. So it's a distinct part of God that was in Jesus. So when there's a question later that I have, but when they're talking about they're spreading the word of God, mm -hmm. it's spreading, spreading what Jesus. was in Jesus, yeah. the yeah. part of God that was in Jesus, yeah, yeah. his word. And then, so you say the scripture says, but the scripture says Jesus made all things, uh -huh. right? We'll read that. Well, how did God make all things? How did his words? That's right. He said it. Oh. So that's how Jesus, the man made all things. I see. When he was the word, he made all things, mm -hmm. but people take the man and they make him God and forever and ever long beard, son, in the pre-existent state before coming, it was Jesus. Mm -hmm. No, no, mm -hmm. it was God's word. Mm -hmm. And so the spirit, the spirit is God's spirit. The, the word of God and the spirit of God. Would you say those are all of God yeah. in the, it's not like a part of God uh -uh. that is in them. It's all God, but it's like, uh, just another way that he's that he manifests it. himself all right yeah it's not him divide and the trinity would say it's him dividing oh, himself up he's he's divided into father son holy spirit okay yeah. and those are like aspects of god that together make one god that's how they would put it okay all right. but they will also counterintuitively and contradictorily say they are also fully god right. jesus the holy spirit and th that incomprehensibility makes it right outside the realm of being able to get it and never being able to explain it.
literally makes n- so they make him a complete no mystery sense. yeah yeah he's a monster i call him a three-headed monster <laughs> and that's what the trinitarians had in mind when they first came up with the idea a three-headed monster it's one monster that has three minds and so we just took them and we separated them out from the one body and said, this is it. But they're one. Oh, you should make a piece of art of that. Yeah, here's your trinity. The three-headed monster. But it's so sacred to them <laughs> that, oh, man, it's really a tough, tough one. Okay. Um, I'm having trouble because we still have more of this, but we're at 25 minutes. Let's so do another part. All right. On to the next. See you soon. Bye-bye.